coming on. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Give him a big hand, everybody. We'll be a big hand for coming on. Oh, that's as well. Vince? Yeah, all right. Well, can you all stand, everybody? Come on. Let's worship God. Come on, together. Ready? morning over a little bit for you too as well okay one of the things I love about coming here on Sunday is not only to see all of you but also get a chance to engage in the faith and if you know this song sing along with me too right one of our favorites of this church great is thy faithfulness oh God my father there is no shadow of turning with me. Thou changest not thy passions, they fail not. And thou hast blessed thou forever be. Great is thy I have never proven 
faithfulness, mercy and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I Welcome everybody all to Kaniwa Congregational Church mm. and to those of you that are on Facebook and YouTube, thank you for joining us here. I'm Kahu Wendell Davis and this is our church here in Kaniohe and so stop by, we're in person. Everybody make some noise, clap your hand, let them know we're in person. So come down, visit us, 1030 and then be a part of our ministry. We'd love you. And with those of you that all throughout the world as well as nationally and locally in the Hawaiian Islands, welcome and aloha. At this time I want to share some announcements. Here's the announcements on the screen, everybody. Communion Sunday today. So our sacrament, of course, every third Sunday. I want to update you on Auntie Gladiola uh, and her services. I just confirm again with, with Butch. So it'll be on the 3rd of September. And 9 o'clock is visitation. 10.30 is the service. And then the final interment will be during the weekday on a Wednesday at, seven, at the 2 o'clock p.m. on the 7th. Uh, Youth Sunday is next Sunday, but also I want to let you know that uh, Buddy McGuire, his memorial, is going to be on the 17th at Punoho. I was able to get Lilia to share uh, the uh, times of his service at the Punoho Chapel, and that will be 2 to 3 p.m. visitation and then 3 p.m. service. So if those of you that would like to attend, please mark those days or take a, take a picture of that announcement out there so you don't forget. And then, of course, our Bible study continues with, with Rocky Gilding over there too as well. Let me turn to the next screen. Because I don't have my clicker today, but I do, wanna, I do have a wonderful deaconess, everybody. How about a big hand for Auntie Jean Kanoho, who's going to give our call to worship because Rocky's not here. Rocky, want to say we love you and God bless you and Gail and get well, my brother. But here's Auntie Jean. Thank you, Auntie. Good morning, all. Yeah, our call to worship comes from the very last book of the Bible, which is? Revelations. Revelations, okay, good, Revelations. Okay, we have a pyramid of angels that shouted out, the millions of them shouted out, and listen to what they're saying, okay? Revelations uh, chapter 5, verses 12 and 13, okay? Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, quite worthy, much worthy, yeah, is the lamb who was slain, not other than Jesus. To receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. I think of Uncle Ralph and them, they're in heaven, and this is all they're doing, is giving him praises and praises and more praises. 
The verse continues. To him who sits on the throne and to the lamb is praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Revelations 5, 12, and 13. So praise him today, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Let's pray as we um, ask God to be with us. Lord, we thank you for the, the opportunity of us to be here together as your body, as your representative, as your church. And thank you for all those who have gathered near and far to be with us, God. We thank you for your son especially. Lord, through him, we have the opportunity, through your, your sacrifice, through your aloha, that we have the opportunity to be eternally with you to be forgiven of our sins, to have hope, and that we can turn our lives around because all things are possible through your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask your blessing, Lord, upon all those that are here and those who are viewing us, wherever they may be. Bless them, God, and may the Holy Spirit permeate not only and flow through this church, but through all the lens of those who are watching us right now. We call upon God, the Holy Spirit, to continue to empower us along the way. In this life that is uncertain. But what is certain is God is love. Aloha kia kua. And that you love us, God, even before we loved you. We thank you for the wonderful sacrifice of your son, Jesus, for us. We are washed by the blood of the lamb. And we thank you, God. Through that washing, we, we continue to be restored and refreshed. To be replenished in his blood, God, for all things our possible power flows through his blood. We thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Makaino Yesu, he who taught us to sing together the prayer that he taught on the Sermon on the Mount. <laughs> Eki mai koa puni, me malama ia ko maki maki makahonua nei. Eki me ia i malama ia maka la ni la. E havi mai ia mako i kia, i aina mako no ne. E kalama e ho ia mako, i ka mako lave hau ana. Me mako e kalana i ka poe lave hau la i ka mako. Mai ho kua e ia mako, i ka ho vale vale ia mai. E ho pakele no na ia mako, i ka ino. No kamea, no kia upuni, a me ka mana, a me ka ho na li a malo aku, a me le, a me le. Will you join me, everybody, by standing with Sidney Nani, Kali Iki Eki. Give God all the glory to the highest. As we turn to our Nahimene Okahi Kalasia, the song of church. Ready? <laughs> Oh, uh-huh. 
And you, I've got so much uh, things to share with you regarding prayer, but uh, I love praying for those who ask for prayer. And, um, and we had a chance to see one of our good friends that he uh, just let me know yesterday after he's been about a year, he had uh, colon cancer. And, and now the doctor said as of yesterday that uh, he's a pastor too. And he said, I'm cancer free, God. So thank you for your prayers. You know, don't give up on your prayers. And if you got any doubt in your prayers, that's not going to come true. God wants you to say, do you believe me? Do you really believe me? Because if you do, there should be no ounce or a little bit of doubt in those prayers. But believe that God will come through. And I've seen, I've seen it through. Look at all the people that's here. I want to lift up Michael Keloha uh, to our prayers as well. I want to say the good news of Tootie, uh, one of our little dogs that are at home. I got four, three little dogs. I got a 17-year-old that is going every day. I said, how are you doing, sweetie? Every day. I said, praise God. You got another day of life. She's 17. If you multiply and do the math, she's over 100 years old, earth, earth lives, I mean, human lives. But she's out there barking, wagging her tail, having a good time every day. Her, her, her um, uh, digestion of course, we, we were worked out on the food that she's able to have, and so she's being pampered, and I guess a shower, whenever I can give her a shower, and take her to get her groomed. She loves when she gets groomed. She come home with a little ribbon on her, on her little ear over there, or some kind of, you know, thing around her neck, and she loves that. But I, I'm just, you know, I know one day she's not going to be there. One day gonna, I'm going to get the news. A dad, you know, that, and, and her name is Anela, if you know your Hawaiian, it means as angel, right? So she's been an angel for us, and uh, one of the last, uh, actually the last baby from all our litter from back in, the, back in the 80s when we first started to have our dogs, and um, we started with, uh, really started to enjoy her. And so I want to say uh, for Anela that, uh, that we love her as well, but I, I want to refer to Tuti. Tuti is a Doberman Pinscher, miniature Doberman Pinscher, that we have, she's uh, 11 years old uh, and uh, just recently had to have surgery uh, on her, uh, she had a little growth on her lip there. And doctor said, Kahu, I think we got all of it over there too, but just take care of her. So I want to let you know that her surgery went well. Tootie, we love you, and she's doing well. So thank you everybody for your prayers for our dogs. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay to pray for your dogs too, your cats, whatever it may be. Birds, whatever it may be, at the same time. In fact, I want to let you know that. So this morning, I'm getting ready for church, and we have a little, um, little, little holder with a little round bowl 
that we can put water inside. And it has a little bird on top that's, you know, kind of like a porcelain one on top. And it just, you know, attracts birds. You get water. So I didn't put in water, but I had some uh, spare quesadillas. And so I put just some, took a lot of quesadillas, put them in small little pieces, and I put it in the bowl. And I figure out, whoever hungry, come to my house, you know. All the birds, come, come. So I just left it out there. But nobody came. And I was getting ready. I took a little sneak out there. And just before I was ready to leave to come to church, I saw the bird. All the pigeons are all on the ground. They're all, they're all pecking off on the ground. Nobody's coming to my quesadillas. And then so anyway, they were picking on the ground. And, and then the, one bird flies on top of my plumeria tree just above the bowl, sees the bowl. Oh, my gosh. I probably, I probably said, but that bird said the same thing. Oh, my gosh. And flew down to the bowl, took a piece of the quesadilla, had a great breakfast on the kahu. <laughs> but here's the thing about it is that it, you, we, got, we got to fly high to be with God. And you can see your blessing. Because if not, sometimes in your prayers, the reason why you don't get the prayers answered, you keep pecking on the ground. You know, walking around, pecking on the ground. If you would just get on the tree, get high up with the Lord, and see what he sees, boy, I tell you, you'll be blessed. So I'm just telling you my animal story this morning to just get you going because you can learn from birds, you know, there too. Remember Jesus said, why would you worry about tomorrow? What, all your paycheck and all the things that you don't have. Look at the birds. Look at all the animals. You know, look at the birds. Who feeds the birds? I feed them. They, they're fine. They don't have any 401ks and they don't have any kind of, you know, job or anything like that. But you look at them, they're flying and they're happy. And that's what we have to remember. As we pray for those that are on our list, and we pray for Maguire Ohana as, as the Miwara is coming back. And as we almost get to the day, let's also keep our Fles Ohana with Butch and his family as we come to that day on that Saturday. And I've been working with Butch in the program. And, you know, uh, Auntie loved music. So if you love music... I love music. Actually, when I do my memorials, it's, it's music, music, talk, music, talk, music, talk, music, talk, music, talk, music, talk, music, talk. It's never talk, 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 music. Talk, 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 music. I love the really music in between because it brings more glory also to God when we bring it together. So we're talking about the songs, and, and I just want to let Butch know. And, and, we, we love his mom, we love his family, but can you give a big hand everybody, for Auntie Gladiola at this time? <laughs> let's, let's pray, God. Let's, let, let's pray. Father, we thank you for all the blessings that you have given us through many of the saints. And we thank you, God, for Auntie Gladiola. Thank you for just her presence with us and her service all the years, her faith, God, as well. Her love, uh, her smile every morning. We would see her. We thank you, God, for Fales Ohana. We lift up also our Maguire Ohana, God, and the times in which we got a chance to know Buddy. We thank you. And thank you, God, for the blessings that wherever we go, we know that you're there with us. Mm. And each day, um, we see even the miracles, even through your creation, we can learn that you're speaking to us in the way that you do. And so, God, as we, as we continue this life, let us remember that we're never alone that you're always with us. And so we ask your blessings upon all those that are on our prayer list. And thank you, God, for continuing to watch over them. Thank you for the miracles you've already made of God. We see the evidence of it before us. And thank you for miracles yet to be declared. But when that miracle comes, we are reminded to proclaim it loudly to the world. God is the one who did it for me. So we ask your blessings, Father, upon our prayer list and also those that we continue to pray along the way. Thank you for walking with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay? Come on, let's sing. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the road and the I fall in on my the Son of God disclosed and he walks with me and he talks with me 
and he tells me I am his own, and the joy. the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is real Aloha to him and the mommy be and just say we love you and the family and also to buddy Michael we, we miss you too as well and to Troy's mom we say we love you and never alone we're all together what a joy that Jesus is with us Okay, we're going to attempt to do this song because our bass player is absent with COVID. So it's, uh, we pray, well, for, Alan. pray for Alan. We can't forget him. Uh, he works really hard. So Alan, this goes out to you. And also um, Miles out there with Jerry. He's not feeling good either. And, uh, mm. and Buddy. Yeah, Buddy. so this song is called <clears throat> I go to the light when you are having a hard time and you can't find anything. There's one place you, you can you can go to the light, and the light is Jesus. So I told Junior, we got together, and I told him, just play the alphabet. Just follow the song the best you can. So he's going to take a crack at it. <clears throat> Pray for him. <laughs> now, nah, he's going to do good. You watch. 
I'm going to do it slow. So. Okay? Afraid of what was round the bend, my heart up on the shelf again, and came and said hello. A million times before, this hello seemed different now. This hello means more. I go to the light. Searching for a long, long time, trying to find the answers to the questions I couldn't find. Happy sometimes and sometimes sad, lost in my emotions, caught between the good and the bad. Take my hand. Help me understand the glory, the power of now and forevermore. I go to the light. Thanks, Julia. <laughs> All right. Now, if I play the bass, you pray. But he's, give a good hand for Julia, everybody. And Blah, thank you so much for that song over there as well. If I'm not mistaken, Blah, I think that was a song written by Roland. Roland Casimiro. Yeah. Yes. I go to light. You know, Roland and I went to school in high school. He was a senior. I was a freshman. And we're all in a band. We all played the boom, 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 boom. The tuba. As a freshman, you have to remember your place. You know, carry his tuba. Take his tuba wherever he wants you to go. 
Every football game, bring his tuba. Set his tuba where he's supposed to go. And when he feels like playing, he'll show up and play. He'll go ahead and man with all the girls. But, you know, our band teacher, Mr. Lord, just we doing that. And he's out there, all the bleachers at, at the old Honolulu Stadium. Then he came back and he says, you got my bass? I said, I got your bass rolling. Here it is. And we're playing, boop, boop. The next thing you know, we're playing. He's out meandering all the girls again. And at the end, he said, don't forget, take my, ba- my tuba back to the school. I said, I got it. Great relationship, good senior. Um, of course, when he joined with his brother and became the son of Manoa, then, of course, the brother's Casimiro. And he went off in his life and off in my life. And, and, um, and we would run into each other a couple times, a couple gigs along the way. And then um, one day I got a, a, a call from his wife and uh, his current wife actually right now. And uh, she said, uh, Cole, you sent out all your devotionals. Can, can I get a copy? I want to share it with Roland. So, oh, Roland, you, oh, I know Roland. Tell him to say hello. So for all those years, I started to send it the devotionals. And then Roland, um, you know, started to love the Lord. He had a great uh, musical life, but he also realized that he needed Jesus. And I didn't realize that. The wife said, kept rolling, said, thank you. I said, okay, thank you, welcome. He kept going on over there too as well. And then one day he went home with the Lord. And I got a call from his wife. Will you come and give the opening prayer? I think Roland would like that. And I did. I didn't know he wrote a song. His brother sang it. I go to the light. And when Blau was singing it, I was just thinking, wow. That's like, thank you, Jesus, for that full circle. Blau's bringing it into the church. We had to, actually, it's a beautiful song if you, if you hear the words. But he loved the Lord, and it was good to know that I know where he went. See, it's so much easier when you're at a memorial, and you know that they've been washed by the blood of the Lamb. You can say, I know where they went. I know that person is with Jesus. And that's what I said at his memorial that was held at the Sheraton Hotel. And as I opened that up, I shared some of the stories that we went through, he and I. But the, the bottom line is that he went to the light. And then that song was just like, I said, praise God. His wife to today is still on my devotional list. She came to church one Sunday, and she plans to come again. But she sat over there, and uh, we probably missed her, but she was here. And she gets all the devotions all the time. She always says, mahalo kahu. So I want to thank uh, Blah. Thank you for singing this song. Go ahead. Yeah, but you know, Roland, Roland, Roland came to know Christ too, and, and because of that, with all what he was going on in his life, uh, with the heavy things that really heavy things that was going on in his life, and uh, but uh, he came to know Christ, and then he gave his testimony on PBS. Yeah, on PBS he gave his testimony before he before he passed, you know, and uh, was was really great. But it, it made open up a lot of avenues for the entertainers, a lot of entertainers that have fallen. And uh, trying to come back, they're still struggling out there. Uh, and then you got the young ones coming up for Paki Ki, you know, like, listen, but, you know, you can only uh, share and uh, show your example to you know, encourage our locals. Yeah. But anyway, that's Roland, though. He, he really came to know Christ and really shared uh, how he came to know Christ, too. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, everybody, let's, let's lift up the Bible because it leads right into, I love it, God. I didn't know what I was going to sing, but it leads right into my message, the kiakahi, what is the purpose of the church? That's exactly what we're to do. Shine the light so the, so the lost can find the way to the light. Will you stand, everybody, with, with also your Bibles as well? And if you could share that with, with, with each other at the same time, lift their Bibles together. Ready? No, keia paipala. This is my Bible, and I stand on the Word of God. Thank you, God, for this manual, this, this torchlight, which can shine that light to those in a dark place. We pray for those yet to come to Jesus, God. For those who are in Jesus, God, empower us again through the Holy Spirit to reach out to the lost, to reach out to those that need to hold on to the gospel of Jesus Christ. But help us, God, also for those that are lost, those who are in darkness, that they will know the truth and that that truth will also continue to bless them, God. Thank you for your word. We ask your blessings upon your church, your halipule, 
And thank you, God, for every pastor and church throughout the world that continue to be lighthouses for Jesus Christ throughout the world. Until the day that he comes again, God, give your righteous a little bit more time, for we don't know when he's going to come. He may come in the, in, the, in, the, in the night, whatever it may be, but let us be prepared to makaukau, to know that we've done the best we can every day to share him with the world. In Jesus' name we pray. All of God's people say, amen. amen. All right, everybody, please be seated over there too as well. So I, I remember uh, sharing, um, went to a house. A pastor asked me if I could come, and I was in Hilo at the time. And the pastor said, will you come? The family just lost their dad. And I said, okay, I'll go with you. I said, will you come and you can pray with me? I said, I will, and I'll pray with the family. Got there, the wife was there. He has five kids. One of them was a Marine that flew in from the mainland, from his boot camp to be a part of that uh, time to comfort his mom. So they were there in the garage, and we came in. I let the pastor lead since I was just helping him along the way. We had a great time in, of just sharing the gospel, of sharing the testimony of the Lord. And, we, you know, we grieved with them, but we also found joy with them. Then we closed with prayer, and then he and I walked to our car. As we walked to our car, the Marine son ran up to us, and he said, hey, Kahus, I know, I know what I'm going to do already. I said, okay, what are you going to do? He said, I'm going to go ahead. And, uh, you know, it's like, you know, right now we're all falling out of pieces. We're like, we're like a jigsaw puzzle. And uh, I'm going to figure them out over there to help we put all those guys together. No worry. We're going to be all right. And the, the Kahu said, okay, you take care. God bless. But I, I wanted to say more. I said, I said, let me just share this with you, my brother. I said, when you come to pieces, God is the one who can put it together. And when you look at a jigsaw puzzle and you look on a box, don't go with the pieces. Look at the picture that God has and then take the pieces and mass the pieces together. Because God will give you clearly a picture of which you to follow. And if you to follow that picture, you put, then God will put those pieces together. But if you're going to say you're going to do it by yourself, then that's self-power. You need supernatural power. And if you're going to say, well, I'm going to do it, don't do that. Say, you know what, with God's help, I'm going to do it. I hear a lot of people say the same thing to you. You know, God only helps those who help themselves. Anybody remember that? Anybody heard that? Even though, that, even though that's nice, that's not true. God helps those who help themselves. Yeah, but here's the truth of it. I'm trying to tell this brother. God helps those who finally realize without God, you cannot help yourself. Amen? Amen. Different perspective. So when I left that, I said, God bless you. Uh, uh, my brother, and, and let me know how we can help at the same time too as well. And so I've been, I've been focusing on the church the last couple of Sunday because I want you to know that you are a key part in the plan that God has for you as we move this ministry, like other ministries, moving together towards the light. But we're not there yet in heaven, but you can still carry that light to, to shine upon everyone that needs to know about, about the Lord. Ephesians chapter 1. Can you just go there for briefly? I know you got your Bibles. Can you go into the New Testament? Ephesians chapter 1. If you want to know more about the purpose and, it's an, and the mag, magnitude and, and the magnificence of church, go to Paul, go to, uh, to the church at Ephesus, go to Ephesians. Everything you need to know about the church, he's written it there. So I'm going to pick on Ephesians right now. Ephesians 1, 22 to 23. Can you, look, can you find that? Ephesians 1. If you're there, say amen. amen. If, you're not, if you're not there, look at your neighbor and make sure you, if they need help. Here's where the pieces come in. God has put all things in subjection under Jesus' feet and gave him as head over all things to who? The church. That's why I'm speaking to you. Which is his body. Not just his body. You are the fullness of Christ. Without him, you feel nothing. Your wholeness is Jesus. Your fullness is Jesus. Without Jesus, like, hey, I'm, I'm going nowhere. I'm going to put all the pieces together. That's fullness without you. That's you, full of putting things together. What Paul is saying, you are the body. You are the, you are the one in which 
that you are the head of all things of which Jesus has already gave to you. And then the fullness of everything and anything to be filled after that is going to come through the Hale Pule. It's going to come to the church. You, to have access to Jesus, I'll put it on a screen over here too as well. He's the ruler over all things. And he has given you, the church, access to him. Here, I'll put it this way. People always say, Kahu, bless me, Kahu. Can you come and bless this? Can you come and pray for this? Can you come and bless? I'd be glad to do that. But let me make it clear with all of you. Because you have the presence of Jesus, the fullness of him in you, the blessings from God can only flow through you. If you don't know Jesus, or you doubt this, or you have already rebuked Jesus, and you try to ask for a blessing, it won't happen. God only blesses those who recognize who he is. That's what this screen is saying to at the same time. No church, no blessings. That's where you come in. When we think about what God is about to do, he said also, you know, when you think about what Jesus said, go, remember his disciples, and make disciples of all nations. Anybody remember that? He said, go, make this. Now everybody think go was the action. Okay, go. No, no. I want to say again, go well. You don't know until you go to the next one. To do what? Go is the, is the, is the part of which you're going to make the move. You're going to, you're going to hoi. But at the same time, make disciples of a nation is what he wants you to do. So when we look at that, that scripture, um, he wasn't just talking about transforming one, two, three, maybe four. He's telling the church, that's all good. But because Jesus is all in you and you are the fullness of him, you are to change societies. You are to, to, to change nations. You are to change the world, not just individuals. But you have to change societies, change communities wherever you go. This church, uh, that's why we adopted the elementary school years ago. Because it's not about us just being here, having a light conference. We take our light outside. How do you share the light? Impact the outside of the community. So we got in touch with the principal over there two years ago. I said, can we adopt you? Nothing to do with church and state. We just want to serve God anything you do. Uh, that, we, that you need us, let us know. Back to school drive. We've been doing it since the time of my arrival. And that was, that's something about making a, a big difference, making a dent in the community. Somebody give a big hand, everybody, for the Lord. Because Blanche Poe, I mean, when we think about, and in Wamanalo also does the same thing, is adopted by churches there. We adopted also over here to it, Benjamin Parker Elementary School. So the church's job, and I put it this way, too, I put it on screen, is not just to produce disciples or to, I mean, the, I mean, it's to produce disciples, not just members. So we need to, you know, increase that. I, I honestly, I'd rather have 10 disciples in my church who want to be church than having 100 members who just want to come to play church. Anybody understand that? 10 disciples. I want to follow Jesus. I'm going to impact the world with Jesus. I want to do everything. I want to have 10 of that than 100. They'd rather sit where you're sitting and just say, oh, that was a good church. Oh, church, let's go home. Make an impact. That's what it's all about, making disciples as well. And our problem is that, here's one of the situation, is that we have too many Christians who are spiritual on Sunday, then go back to the flesh come Monday. And so we need to be um, consistent. That, you know what they call that? I, I call that when you one thing and then you change the other. For example, you holy, holy Sunday, carnal Monday, you know. Uh, I'm on my knees on Sunday, then I do what I please on Monday. You know, when you look at all of that, that that's what I call schizophrenic saints. Schizophrenia. You got to be what, who you are, identify with that one. And um, it, we have too many of them running around and painting a f confusing picture of Jesus. You go to church. People, anybody experience that? They know you go to church, but when they see the way you act, or behave, they wonder why you go to church. Anybody? Anybody seen that? Because, you know, they say, oh, yeah. Yeah, he was good. But, and he go to church too, Kao. Oh, my gosh. You know what I mean? So that, that's a schizophrenic saint. So we have to go ahead. And, and you're, painting, you know, you're painting the wrong picture of Christ and his kingdom by not being that same person that you should be 
in the Lord too as well. I'm going to give you three purposes that I want you to hang on to, and I'm going to put it on the screen, why you need to do what you do and why you do what you do as a purpose-driven church. The first one is establish the presence of Christ. That's what you're supposed to do as a church. Now, you in Ephesians, look at chapter 2 again. Go to 19, and I'll, I'll go from there. 19 through 22. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 to 22. If you dare say, I'm there. Okay? I'll wait a bit. Establish the presence of Christ. Paul says in 19, So then you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints, that's the church now, and are of God's household, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, amen, hallelujah to that, in whom the whole building, not just a part of you, the whole building is being fitted together, is growing into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together into a dwelling of God in the Spirit. Wow. If you had to design a dream house, Let's say you have billions of dollars and you want to build your dream house. What would that look like? Can you, can you talk 30 seconds to your neighbor? What would that look like if you had a dream house? Go ahead and have that conversation. Go ahead. Dream house. What would like it? Well, you got a pool, a helipad. What you got over there? Five cars, you know, three pools, whatever you got. Ten, ten room mansion, 20 room mansion. What would that dream house look like? All right, come back. Here's my point. I'll put it on the screen. God is always with you at your house. That's why he wants you to come to his house. This is house. This house. When we talk about the fitted together, you are together as well. Verse 21 says the church, that the church is a building. Don't miss this. Look at your scripture. Being what? Together. Fitted together. And what else? Growing into a holy temple in the Lord. All of you came from different places and different, could be different churches too as well. But you came here and God took you and fit you into the church that we have today. Hallelujah. Somebody says, praise the Lord. Yeah. Wherever you were. I mean, if you're part of Kanye, oh, great. But when you look at all those other pieces that came in, they make what is Kanye Congregation Church today. And so we, we continue on that. What does a temple do? Anybody know? It houses God. Temples house God. The Old Testament people did the same thing. New Testament people of today, the presence and glory of God resides in the church. When you come together, it's not just me and you. When you worship and sing with Kahu and the Vista Nakaneola, the angels are already singing before you even raise your voice. The Bible says they're surrounded by angels. You can't see them, but... They're all here in this church. And they're singing along because their job is to give God all the praise. Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty. All they do is all time long is just praise the Lord. And so when we look at the temple, it resides in the church. Also our praise. Verse 22, look at that. You fit it together, you're growing, but you're also what? Being built together into a dwelling of God in the spirit. That's why unity in the church is so important. Because you built together. And you built together, not only together, but as a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit to be here. I'll be honest. If you haven't known by now, the Holy Spirit never shows up if there's disunity in the church. Anytime you divide it. Don't even expect God to show up. You can sing, you can praise, hallelujah, you can say, thank you, Jesus, amen, hey, yeah. That's all fluff. That doesn't even go to God. That doesn't even go past this ceiling over here. Because if you, if you don't, if you have the disunity, because one of the things God hates is disunity in the church. He fits you together. He built you together. The Spirit will come and dwell with you when you're together. When you're not together, because I, I've, I've also helped a lot of churches that are divided, there's Pilikee in the church, the hooky hooky in the church, and you're gonna come play church? 
Why not just not have church until you get everything together? And when you get everything together and you can come and meet here together, repent, reconcile, and become a church, then God will recognize you and say, oh, I can see your praise. Other than that, if you just show up and you got all this division, I'll tell you now that the Bible says, I never show up. He's not even paying attention to the church. So when we look at that scripture reading, what Paul is saying, it's, it's also about the dwelling of the Holy Spirit. I'll put, this, I'll put this on the chart before I go to my second point. The church isn't just a building on Waikapoki Road, but it's the temple of God that's in you also. You are the temple of God. It's people of God. So you are God's mobile temple. Where you go, you can take Jesus anywhere. Everywhere you can take Jesus with you. That's what I love about the Holy Spirit. Here's, here's, the, here's the point number two. Not only his presence, but you establish the program of Christ. Well, let me just, if you can go to Ephesians chapter 4 now. Chapter 4, verse 11 through 15. Let me help you. So it's not just the presence of, of God that is here that you need to establish, but establish the program. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 through 15. Paul is saying that God has already equipped you for ministry. That's why when we talk about, like, church ministries, who wants to sign up? We've got a nominations committee. Anybody want to sign up for hospitality? Anybody want to sign up for treasure? Uh, you know what? It's in you. God put it in you already. All you got to do is reach down there and say, God, what do you want me to do? I know I've been working for the bank a long time. I can, I can serve as treasure. Well, I know I've been working with, this, with children at my school. I know I can do youth, whatever it may be. It's in you if you listen to the Holy Spirit. He's going to build up the body of Christ, unify you in the faith, attend the knowledge or the EK of the Lord. But look at verse 15. Don't miss this. He said, but also to speak the truth in love, we are to, don't miss this. Here's what I want you to miss. We are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head that is Christ. So not just speaking in the truth in love, but to grow in all areas. Grow up in Jesus Christ. Amen? I hope you're growing. I hope you're transforming. I hope that, you know, after today you say, man, I, I learned a little bit more I didn't know about that. I hope that you're going growing. Like I said, you know, if you, you, you can't always stay in Bible preschool. You've got to move it a little bit up a little more every time you come to church or every time you study your Bible. Restoration and remodeling is always God's business. He's always wants us to do that. Growing up. That's what, you know, when I reach back in my, my, my own history, I'm thinking in terms of, of, of how it was growing up. Remember? Growing up. Back in the time when we grew up, and our parents and grandparents, now if your parents and grandparents wanted you to learn and grow in the Lord, can you clap your hands? Let me know. Can you clap your hands over there too? I mean, for them it was like, you're going to learn God. Anybody? For us, it was like that in the house. I'm pretty sure it was you in the same house at the same time. And we know already that if you didn't get with the program, what's the program? You're going to get to know God. You're going to get to know the Lord. You're going to pray. You're going to give your tithes. That's why we were giving a quarter every Sunday by our grandparents to learn when we were kids that you're going to tithe to the Lord. Anybody remember tithing when you were a kid? Tithing to the Lord. Let me make sure that you pull it. God is great. God is good. Let us thank him. What? See, you all went to the same house. And so there he was. We all learned the same prayer. And all we wanted to just get to the food. Not really, God is great. God is good. Not knowing that they were planting that in you. Memory, memory, memory. All of a sudden, you got older. And then something hit you. You said, man, God, who oh, he's great, man. Woo. He's good. God is good. Yeah. How you got that? You learned that from your Kupuna, from your Makua. All those who pass the word and try to grow you up at the same time. Many of us know that that you grew up so much in them that they were part of your being. Anybody remember that? One eyeball. That's all they need. Give you one eyeball. You already knew you were wrong. They already said, when we talk once, you came. You didn't just jog. You didn't waltz. You ran. Anybody remember that? So now, 
Come here. You were there. Bam. Talk about roadrunner. Boom. It was a matter of like, come in, come in, yeah. This coming. Better hurry up. We all grew up with the program. That's how it was over there. You came running. And at the same time, if they call, I put it there. If they called you more than once, that was the death penalty. <laughs> yeah, amen. I mean, they called you twice. You, you prayed that when Papa came home or whatever, whoever called you, that on your way to that person, that Jesus would rapture you in heaven. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about, about being there and getting what you was going to get because of the fact that they spoke more than once. And, and those were the days. Hallelujah. Anybody say hallelujah with me? Those are the days. I, I don't know about today. I, I'm, really, I'm really hoping that that would be better. But today is not the same as, as when we grew up. Uh, but I can only just pass that. And, and I want to be honest. You know, when I think about my parents and grandparents, especially my grandparents, they weren't trying to be abusive. They loved you at the same time. They wanted to discipline you, not hurt you. They wanted to also correct you. But they wanted you to know the boundaries. These are your boundaries. You're going to have boundaries when you get older. Because if you mess up on those boundaries, you're going to have other consequences, jail or death. They were trying to help you along the way. So we know they weren't being abusive. They just wanted to make sure that they were being corrective. And when I think about those days over there, too, they wanted you to know the Ten Commandments, not the Ten Suggestions, the Ten Commandments, so that you know you grew up with some boundaries. Somebody say amen. amen. That's the kind of people we had in our lives. We also now got to be that same disciplinarian, loving person as well with our own children, with our own grandbabies too as well. So where would we be if it wasn't for Jesus? Where would we be if that grandparent or grandparents or parent or parents or maybe uncle, auntie, godmother, godfather, whoever, whoever guided you to Jesus, where would you be if it wasn't for that person? in your life today? Where would you be? Can you give a big hand for whoever they are? I don't know who, who gave you that, who, who led you to Jesus. But you should give heaven a round of applause because God sent them. That's why when we pray, I love when the, when the um, kupuna would pray. When the, when, when, when the kupuna prayed, they prayed, but they also had a hit list prayer. Some of you were on the hit list. Hit them, Jesus. Don hard-head kid, pray the Lord, you know. Whatever it may be, you may not be on the hit list, but they raise you up. Somebody prayed for you, and that's why you're here. That's why I'm here, okay? So when we, when we think about what God wants, I'll put it on the screen. Now, maybe that'll help you out too as well. He wants you to grow up. He wants you to know the whole truth. And when you know the truth, share it with Aloha, that in Christ, everything is in him. When you look at the leadership of Christ. Take that leadership like you did for your parents and grandparents. Take that leadership of Christ and now apply it to your life and apply it to your, your loved ones too as well. Here's the last one before I let you go. Establish the presence of Christ. Establish the program of Christ. Church, here's the last one. Establish the power of Christ. If you believe in this church there is power, can you say amen? Amen. Because I know, I feel the Holy Spirit every time I'm with you. There's no doubt in my mind that the Ohana Himalili is flowing in you right now as I'm speaking. There's no doubt in my mind that there's power that you have. When we think about power, I'm going to go to what I had shared with you in John 14, verse 12. So if you can go there, but if you remember, that was the opening scripture I had on my, my PowerPoint. John 14, verse 12. Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, the one who believes in me, the works that I do, then he says, he will do also. But he doesn't end just there. In verse 12, he says, the greater works than these, he will do. Wow. Then he says, because, finally he says, I am going to the Father. Now, if you dissect that scripture reading, you're going to find some power that's in there. Let me help you. Well, let me just say this. He's talking about that intimacy. 
Can I just share something personal with you? I've been a chaplain at my school, going on my 11th year. But I've never experienced what I'm about to tell you. So I have, and praise the Lord, chapel was just ah, was so wonderful this whole week, and also last week. You know, but but I, down to elementary school, and I'm, I just had my kindergarten to second grade. Bye, Kao, bye. Third, fourth, and fifth graders, they're coming in the door. Third sitting there, fourth sitting there, fifth sitting over there. I'm on the side, I'm ready to go to when they're all sitting nice and they're coming quiet. So I'm standing there and there's a, there's a fifth graders here. Well, some of them. There's a bunch of guys, but then some girls. And uh, anyway, I, just, I, I, I looked at him and one of the boys, he looked at me after he's talking to his friends and he said, Ko, can I ask you a question? Sure. How long does it take for you to do your hair? <laughs> now, that's not even a biblical question. I said, oh, and the first thing I said, I said, well, I tell you what, I've had my relationship with my hair all my life. We've been together a long time. It just takes me about two, three minutes, whip them up. We know each other so well, but that's it, I'm here. That's what I look like. It says, I, we, we love your hair, though. Intimacy. <laughs> Let me bring it together. Sometimes we're, 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 we're stuck because we, we don't have that right relationship with, with Christ, right? And so he says, the greater works than these he will do. Notice that the church isn't called to do different works than Jesus. Notice that. He didn't say you will do different works. He says you will do greater works. Don't miss that now. It's called, you're called to do greater works. Now, we're not greater than our Lord. Let me just be real honest about that. Now, we know that no one is greater than Jesus Christ. But what, is, what he means by that is that we can do greater things in terms of our outreach. I'm speaking to people all over the world, Facebook, YouTube, Aloha, all those guys there that, that we can do as a church. You also, learning the word of God, you can, like the disciples go, go out and tell 10 other people. If each of you talk to at least 10 other people, we're looking at about maybe, what, 500, 600 more people who get to know Jesus. So through technology, through God's creation, we can reach out more to the world. Jesus, when the fl that's why Jesus had to go to the Father. Because he himself, in his human um, uh, state, for example, in his, in his own, in a sense of as a man, could only go so far. Because like all of you, we get tired. We like rest. But through the Holy Spirit, we can do more. Amen? So that's why Jesus said, I've got to go. The disciples said, well, but where you got to go? Where are you going? But he knew that not only he was going to sacrifice himself for you and wash you by his blood, but he knew that when I go, I'm going to call the Holy Spirit. See, when you look at, that, that's when you look on the bottom over there, too, he's empowered the gospel through you. But don't miss it. Look what he says in the end. That's why he said in the end, because I am going to the Father. If he doesn't go to the Father, remember he said in Acts 1, he said, then you will be empowered when the Holy Spirit gives you the power. You'll be in power when I go to the Father. But I got to go see I got to go see my daddy first. And then he's going to send the one Hemolele or the Holy Spirit. Then you will have power. So that's when he says that in verse 14, uh, 12. He said, you will do greater works and you would actually do even greater works in these areas. But I also need to go to the Father. So it's important to know that the Holy Spirit will dwell in every one of you because Jesus went to the Father. Power comes that way too. And then I just want to close with this too as well. Do you have power? Can you tell your neighbor you have power? Can you do that? Because I get, I get most of my calls and emails from people who feel that they have no power. I got to admit, there's a lot of them that don't know Jesus, and I get a chance to talk. But there's also saints that feel that they don't have power. You have power. Jesus just told you, as a church, as saints, he says, you have power. You have the manna. 
if you doubt that, then why did Jesus die on the cross? For nothing. If you, don't, if you doubt that, he gave you the power on the cross. And when you read your Bible, it, you don't just have, you're not just a, a conqueror. The Bible says you're an overwhelming conqueror. That means that there's nothing you cannot do that God cannot give you the power to overcome. That, that should be a, a clap your hands and to give God the glory. You know what I mean? So if, if you get a bad health report today, all things are possible through Christ. You, you get a chance that you go to work and they say, no, we're shutting down. You know, we're no longer getting the business anymore, like what happened in COVID. Then don't worry about it, because when God closes the door, he opens a window. I will say that too. You have the power. If there's something that you cannot do, it's not in the language of God. For God is, I can. Remember that shirt I told you? I, I'm still thinking about making one for this church. If can, can. If no, can. Still can. And put it in the back of your shirt, faith in Jesus. I'd be, I'd be a cool shirt for you to walk around. Because everybody knows if can, can, no can, no can. No, not, not for the saint. And then we should have another one called SWAT. You all should be on the SWAT crop, uh, group. You know, SWAT. Saints walking around town. SWAT. We should have shirts like that. I remember I did one called CIA. And we wore it at a church whole week in Kona. I had, and I don't know, it was just a God thing. Navy blue with yellow. Oh, my gosh, that's like FBI colors, right? So the whole church, I got about 50, 60 of them, maybe 60 of them at least, with all the shirt on that we made, that Mama Ko and I made in the back, was CIA, Christ in action. And they were wearing that to the whole weekend. Then I got a phone call, hey, Ko, you heard about the church? What church? The, the church the, 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 down the road from me, hey, what happened? I said, the feds were there. <laughs> there was an invasion by the feds. Yeah, it said CIA. I said, no, that's Christ in action. That was my church. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, we, you know, you have power. You don't need a T-shirt. It's already in you already. Okay? Let's pray. Father, we ask your blessings about your word today. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the church. Let us be purposeful and deliberate in all that we do in reaching others for Jesus Christ through the gospel. In his name I pray. Amen. Okay? All right, everyone, we're going to come to communion now. And this is a great time for us to gather. So I'm going to ask Auntie Jean to help me with the communion. Every third Sunday, we come together. Thank you, Ben. still going to wear our gloves and pass it out to you. And as we do so, um, take one. As you, of course, many of you know, come to the aisle, go out that way, and make your way back to, the, um, back to your seat. I have one, Andy. Thank you. Thank you. In the meantime, I want you to think about all the things I've talked about. You have power in Jesus. You have love in Jesus. You have hope and joy in Jesus. You have forgiveness in Jesus. You also have repentance and of the, your sins. And it, I, I love the Lord. How about you? Yeah? So we're going to do a couple of songs out there too to kind of get you prepared. And when you're ready, there's no time limit. You sit there. Think about the Lord. And when you're ready and your heart is ready, you come to the table. You know, some churches pass out their communion. I don't. If you, if you need and you can't walk, for example, if there's something that's going to hold you back um, that's physical, let us know. We'll bring it to you. But I believe you come to the table. That's where God is right now, on the table. Okay? I'm going to change my slide. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanks.
As you have the wafer and prepare for communion, the two sacraments of the church is communion and baptism. And there's something special about communion. When you think about the washing of the blood of the Lamb upon you, when you think about Recalling, remembering Jesus, to haupu, to remember. And sometimes, we just as a reminder, communion comes in to just remind, remind us about how much we were loved by the Lord. And then how much he loved you. And even on that night when he, when he was about to be crucified and following day, and he was going to be taken away by all the, the soldiers, the Roman soldiers, he he had that meeting in the upper room, and many times when I look at you, I think about what that looks like even right here. What will it be like when we get out of this building? We take Jesus with us. And he broke the, he, he gave thanks to the Lord, to God, and then the Lord took the bread, and when he broke the bread, he said the same words I said to you 2,000 years later. Still got mana, still got that power that you need. And they said, this is my body. Remember, he's the bread of life. We don't need anything else. 
but him. He said, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. Then when they were done, he took the, the, the cup and he raised it up to you and I and reminded us about how important it is to be under the covenant of God, be under the agreement. And he says, this is, this is the, my cup, the new covenant of my blood. Not just any blood. The blood of the Lord. The blood that will bring power and healing Blood that will take care of you from now till you get home in heaven. Blood that continues to flow from him through others. Your wash, your ao ao, your ao ao kapu is to be bathed by, by, the, by the, just, the, just by the grace of God in his blood. When you have that bath, that's the bath that he's talking about. This is the new covenant. I will always be with you. Come all you are weary. He says all those wonderful things. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Because you washed by my blood. You my kids. Says God. And so he says. This is the new covenant of my blood. Drink as often as you do. In remembrance of me. We thank you Jesus for the blessings you have given us. And we thank you. For all that you have given us. In all that we can be so thankful every day. Just for the breath of life that we got up this morning. We can say hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. One more day in this world. That I can make a difference. Show us the way God. And also bring before us those that you want us to reach. God we thank you. For the great ministry of Jesus Christ. Continues to live in, the, in your church. Bless us God. As we continue to move forward one day at a time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blessings and thank you for loving us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Makainoa, kamakua, kekeki ame, kauhanimalele, meakakua pao. Blessings to all. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I pray. And all of God's people say, Amen. 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 All right. Thank you, everyone. Mahalo. Okay. My desire. Oh, yeah, 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 right. Kahu then. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to call on Kahu and uh, Mama Kaulani. Who come, uh, Himini Kako. <laughs> Can we give Kahu and, and um, um, Mama Kaulani a big hand, everybody, for coming up and singing a song? Thank you. And then, you know, the tithes and offerings, you know, uh, where it is. And for those of you that are um, on Facebook and YouTube, we have the address over there too. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. And so send your Lulu as uh, your heart wants to give and desire to give to the Lord and his kingdom. That's it. When the opportunity arises, you better make and take the opportunity. Amen, amen. The ability and the gift that God gives you. So we're going to sing for the next three hours. Gotta be muck go. Gotta be ready. God, we thank you for the message today. You know, we as the church, yeah, we ought to touch the hearts of the next generation. The song we're going to sing today is called More, M-O-R-E. And this song, I'm sure some of you old kupunas and old timers probably heard this song be way before I was born. No, <laughs> not true. No. G. G, G. G is for God. More in the greatest world of the world has no this is the love.
God gives to you alone. More than the simple words we try to share, we will Father God, we thank you so much that we know that all things comes from above, comes from you. And Father, ours is to give back, not grudgingly, but Father, you tell us that you love a cheerful giver. And you promise, Father, to give us even more abundance in our needs because of our faithfulness. Father, thank you for those that have given, for those that are less fortunate, we thank you through for them, for their life. Father, thank you for a wonderful time of praising you today, and Father, we, we just rejoice and forgive us. Father, we come short in any way. Father, forgive us. Pray now in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Anthony. Please be seated, everybody. Mahalo. We're going to bring our children up to do a song for you, too. Yeah. I will call upon the Lord. Mm -hmm. sing, sing. They're going to do a song called, I will call upon the Lord. And if you remember, they did a little uh, martial arts in there. Just to, you know, kind of like... Give the devil a little swack out there too as well. So I think they're ready. You ready? Okay.
God that we need all the kung fu people we can get in Jesus Christ. Can you all stand up, everybody? Come on. I will call upon the Lord and don't forget to take care of the devil. Give him a map so he doesn't get lost. Uh, then get all your martial arts together. The kids will show you how. Ready? to the next screen. Can you all stand? I'm going to ask everybody on that side if you can come this side. Can you all do that? Everybody go to move on down if that's the case. we we'll make room. For everybody on that side in Holly Hole Keeper, come on this side over here. I want you to do that. Come come inside. Come inside. Take a spot inside here. Find a spot. Plenty of seats over there too as well. We're going to say the scripture together. I'm going to have all the musicians exit the stage and come and join you right in the middle, including myself. But can you repeat the scripture already? Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. All right. I'm going to be playing the Lord's Prayer, and I want you to join me. We're all going down from the stage. Come on. We're all going to come down. We're going to come down over here and join our people over here too as well. And we're going to play. Uh, we're going to put the words up there as well. I'll put the words up. Yep. Sorry about that. Get over there. The words up there. Oops. Get that out of the way. Uh -huh. All right. We're singing the Lord's Prayer together.
Sunday. Bless you, everybody. We love you. Aloha.